you're on a personal growth journey, this is an opportunity for personal growth somewhere. There are going to be ways that you grow that don't fit for me and vice versa. I can be inspired by you and you can be inspired by me and then we grow together. Our compassion to others is limited by our compassion to ourselves. Love to me is the million dollar answer. The person I love the most has this perspective that is different from mine. What can I learn? How can I grow? When your business is helping people grow on a personal level, you know, personal journey kind of experiences, you get asked how you do that when you're in a relationship. And we've traversed that one ourselves, starting out where I was your mentor before I became your friend, before we entered into this romantic connection that we have. And it's a great question because as we grow personally, we discover new things about ourselves. And how do you introduce that into a partnership or a romantic connection where your romantic partner may know you one way and you're getting to know yourself in a new way? How do you keep that from creating conflict or really becoming a hindrance in your partnership. Yeah. How do you not drift away from each yeah. other as you are exploring your inner growth? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a great, it's a great, great question. One of the ways we talked about in our last podcast by, you know, really setting the tone for something, because one of the one of the big issues is fear right? That's across the board, any major relationship issue, there's some aspect I would offer to a vast majority of them. There's some fear tied, tied to whatever is going on when there's an issue, right? And so one of the ways that we combat that issue in, and make sure it kind of comes off the table, is maybe a better way to put that, um, is by having a breakup plan. And so um, that to me opens up that door to say, okay, now we're free to to not have that fear looming over us so how do we best support each other from a place of love as we learn about who we are becoming you know not having that expectation that you're always going to be amber from the very beginning of our relationship to you know 50 years from now yes right you know that would be a crazy you know, and it would you know, be boring. It would be very boring if you're exactly the same. You know, yeah. how how can you be the exact same person? You know, I mean, that would almost be impressive. Like, how do you <laughs> how do you do that? I'm not even yeah. that. I'm kind of impressed. Um, <laughs> so ultimately, it is having that freedom and flexibility in that connection to learn about yourself in the process, which goes to that plan. But also one huge tip is to let your personal journey and learning about yourself then flow into learning about your relationship and your connection. Sometimes we see a personal journey as being all mine, right? This is me and this is mine and I'm learning about me but you're in a connected relationship because anything that is about me is about us. Mm -hmm. And we, we kind of start to forget about that sometimes when we're on these journeys of personal self exploration. Yes, it is. It's about self. It's about getting to know the internal aspects and things that are new and enlightening about myself. But then when we bring that into our partnership and we start to journey through that together, you might learn something new about yourself. And maybe it's that you don't align with this, this new part of me, and that's okay. But that doesn't mean our relationship has to disconnect as a result of it. And we talked about this in a previous podcast too, like your new found love with pickleball. That's something you learned about yourself. You really love pickleball. I learned that I really don't love pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't get to do that together. But I also learned that I love to watch you light up. Mm -hmm. 
in something that you thoroughly enjoy. So my joy came from your self-exploration of you weren't feeling active. And that lack of activity was making you feel unhappy in ways that you didn't realize. But then through your personal journey and your personal awareness, you went in, you started doing a bunch of different activities. It wasn't as though pickleball was the only thing you started doing. You started going to the gym, you started doing all these different things and pickleball lit you up. And I was able to just experience the joy of that through watching you explore those aspects of yourself. And then that made me sit and go, okay, what am I not exploring within myself to get my body moving again in a similar way? Mm -hmm. And so when we look at, yes, it's your personal journey, it's my personal development journey, but I can be inspired by you and you can be inspired by me and then we grow together. Then it becomes two whole complete people on a journey of exploration that then becomes stronger together instead of growing further apart. Yes. Podcast ends there. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that, yes, 100%. I mean, it's, I think really the next step after that is well, what does that look like in practical life? Right. And that is to me what, what we focus on. Uh, and, and we do very well. And, and that is, hey, when I want to go play pickleball, you don't make me feel like I'm leaving you or that, you know, you know, oh, he's doing that without me. Or, you know, it's, you don't put guilt or shame or expectation on me. Like you say, you, you are happy when I'm happy. It's, it's, it kind of, it, it, you want to see that levity in me. Same as like when you go, you want to go do yoga, right? Yes. Like I, I used to love yoga at one point in my life. It was a huge part and it kind of drifted away and it just wasn't really, it, it doesn't serve me in the same way that it did then. And so, you know, when you go, it's not like I'm like, oh, well, you know, why isn't she inviting me? Or why, you know, why can't we do this together? Or, you know, why does she have to do that? Why can't she do something I like? Or, you know, it's all these different expectations that that we place on each other it's like we don't have that we actually celebrate the differences that we have in the ways that we like to express who we are and so that to me is a huge huge part of this and and so the practicality comes down to um, when you go it's like yes like go do that like nurture your soul go have fun, enjoy your time. And so our words are always very positive and uplifting. And then when we get back, be like, you know, just, Hey, tell me, how did it go? Like, walk me through it. Like, what was your, you know, and, and I, and I love when you share the, the parts of your experience, cause I want to see you light up. And then same with me, I, I, I get to share with you and that's like fun. So even though we didn't do the very thing or the activity together in that sense, we, we get to by expressing it and, and joining in kind of vicariously, right? Yes. And so that's what, to me, and, and we're using these activities uh, as, as a reference point for personal growth in general, right? Yes. Because there are going to be ways that you grow that don't fit for me and vice versa. And that doesn't make me bad or you bad or anything. It just, it just allows for, for uniqueness to flourish and allows ways to be like, wow, like this is this is the way that my love is the best version of herself. That's exciting. Yes. And navigating deeper things, right? It's easy to talk about pickleball or yoga mm -hmm. because most of the time you can handle those types of things in a relationship. And I know from clients and friends who say, but then when something deeper in me shifts. Let's take our faith. Because I navigated this one myself. My faith didn't change, it expanded. And I put it that way for a reason. I sincerely have a deep love and commitment to what 
I call God. But how I express that is very different now than what it was even 20 years ago. I have expanded how I perceive my connection in that. I've studied world religion, world culture for so many years of my life. And the more that I learned about that, the more that I learned about myself and how I experience that connection. Therefore, my personal growth journey became very different. And I was in a relationship at the time where that created fear. It could have gone a different way. It didn't. And I understand that. And I'm going to be 100% transparent in, with our community because I ask the same, right? Anytime we're in a conversation, the more transparent we can be about the journey of our life, mm-hmm. the more we learn from one another. I got to a point where I could no longer pretend that my belief system was very myopic in one way. It had expanded based on what I had come to know about myself and what I had come to understand from aspects of my journey. It didn't fit for the person I was with, and I understood that. So did that mean in that personal relationship that we should shoehorn each other in and make each other feel uncomfortable for the rest of our lives together? Or was the better thing to do to say, I honor where you are in life and I love you enough to let you go with love and to do the same for me and then to allow each other to go on our personal development journeys in other directions. Remaining friends, as we talked about, that we would do in our previous podcast. And that's what we decided to do. So there are times in our personal development journeys, if we're in a romantic partnership, that we do grow in ways that will not align. It's how you then come to the table and discuss that, understand one another, and make the decision to move either forward together or out of that connection that will make the difference. That's a great point. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. I mean, faith is is absolutely a big one. Um, I know politics, I mean, these are the way that we understand the world, even even our willingness just to be open-minded or to open our thoughts to not be in congruency with the rest of the world or what is perceived as quote unquote normal. You know, these are aspects of personal growth that, that we expand. And sometimes there are these expectations and relationships that where when we get into it, it's going to be this one way. And so, you know, that's why we're having this conversation. How do we, you know, how do we navigate that without drifting apart? And, and I, I don't know if there's an exact answer to that other than what you just said. There are situations where it's just not possible. And maybe the reason why one, we, one was in that relationship was because it was part of their growth and expansion plan. At a, at, a, at a greater capacity, right? They needed that relationship to help them expand as an individual, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically as a person. And it was a key aspect to the next level of who they are meant to become through the rest of their lives. And they can be honored, uh, they can have honor and gratitude for the experience to help them, you know, because maybe they love their so- themselves at a, at, you know, not from a egoic standpoint, but from a true authenticity standpoint. And so from there, you can be thankful. You can say, this is, 
this was meaningful to me in every ounce of it, even the hard times, the good times, everything about it helped me become the very person who I love today. That is no longer in a relationship with this per, you know, other person, but it now sets me up for the rest of my life. So yes, there are gonna be absolutely, there, there's gonna be situations like that in, in these experiences. But I mean, one of the things I really kind of want to walk through also is like, you know, when, when we are in these situations and we do bump up against these, these railings, if you will, um, uh, how do we, and we do feel like we're meant to be with this other person, you know, how do we, how do we navigate that? Right. You know, how do we allow a different level of growth knowing that just faster doesn't mean better? Knowing that slower doesn't mean worse, or slower doesn't mean better, and faster doesn't mean worse. That, you know, how can we allow for the space for both individuals to, to grow in parallel at a different pace or regarding different aspects of their lives? And that is the million dollar question. Love to me is the million dollar answer. When we have that space of what here we call unconditional love, mm -hmm. no box put around it that says, you must operate the same as I do. Mm -hmm. Be a mini version of me. So if I am navigating this personal development aspect of myself, you should be doing that as well. If I'm Coming to know myself in this way, why are you, Austin, not doing the same? Mm -hmm. Or if we have decided to navigate the same personal growth journey, it doesn't become a competition, mm -hmm. which we have definitely witnessed. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, have we witnessed. Couples will enter into, a, we're going to do this together, because then we can support each other along the way. And healthy competition, there's nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> it can actually fuel you and help you along the way. But when that healthy competition tips over into unhealthy competition, mm -hmm. where you begin to actually either sabotage one another or hold each other back, then it becomes challenging. And so love comes in as the key to that. And it goes back to what we were saying about you loving me so much that yoga and seeing how it lights me up makes you so happy. And pickleball, seeing how much you love that, makes me happy because the base is love. And since I love you so much, when I feel love in you, that love then radiates back to me and we elevate in love, no matter what is feeding the love. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge aspect of it where competition and we're doing this just to prove something to ourselves or to one another well, that's actually more fear-based. You're going to get ahead of me, so I have to get ahead of you. And that detracts from love. Mm -hmm. Same with comparison, right? Right. Yeah. And so we need to find that place of love in our connection, love of self, which is what is truly fueling that personal growth, that journey that we desire to be on. I'm doing this whatever that personal growth aspect is, because I love myself. Mm -hmm. Silence your inner critic, right? That's the book. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. That's the book that we're releasing, and it's all around how that inner critic can take that personal development journey and suck it right into that fear-based versus that love-based, that inner champion. Yes, I'm here I'm doing this because I desire to be the hero of my own journey. And as the hero of my own journey, lift up the hero within others, yeah. right? If we know that that's what we're doing, we're doing it from the 
inner hero side, that inner love side, which means that we see heroes all around us as well Mm -hmm. and not competitors or especially in our partnerships. Like we do start to create distance between our partner when we start to see them as the opposition and not the collaborator. Yeah. It's a great point. I think the key word there is, you know, inner, inner journey, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's this personal growth is, even though it can be experienced collectively, like in a relationship or in a group of friends or and all that, it's still experienced within. And so the, one of the struggles that we talk about is a lot of society is built from this external to internal um, approach of knowledge or information or even awareness to uh, shift our actions inside. But I'd say one of the ways to really overcome this aspect, everything that you're talking about, the, the fear, is to really do your best to flip that really focus on the inside and and what what is going on within you and how can you breathe that the love that you feel inside how can you breathe that into the external and so then things like competition comparison uh, you know start to fall away because it's not relevant in that sense that it's it's defining you it's not um un- it's, you know when you're going from the external to the internal it's it's unintentionally fueling the ego and but when you're going from the internal to the external then you're in direction. And that's something you really, really beautifully talk about in, in your book is that is sometimes we let the, the ego uh, take control, right? We let it drive us. And, and then that's where the inner critic comes in and, and just takes over, right? But the inner champion, that's all, that's from the inside. And so we can direct ourselves in our actions. And that's what I... Um, that's what I love when we are truly on a, on, on the, for me, when I was, when, when I feel like the most on path for my inner growth, I'm not letting the externals define my internal. I'm letting my internals uh, flow out into the external experience. Yes. Which then can create a stronger connection. Yeah. And if for any reason it's not, you can use that as inner growth, right? Begin to ask yourself, why? Why? That inner critic would have you believe that there's some problem or issue. Mm -hmm. Your inner champion would have you understand that there's some opportunity, Mm -hmm. either an opportunity to learn or an opportunity to create a stronger bond. Mm-hmm. somewhere there's an opportunity and we just have to really understand what it is. So you're on a personal growth journey. This is an opportunity for personal growth somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, yes. And also redefining what different means. Yes. You know, different doesn't mean bad. There's, there's almost been a, a, a societal correlation to that. And, and like, okay, so what is the practicality? You know, what if what if a couple is uh, looking for personal growth and one of them is saying, "Hey, I'd like to be vegan." The other one still wants to eat meat, right? This is something yeah. we've we've had clients and friends talk about, you know. Or one of them's, you know, really into like your faith is a really big one as well. Or one, maybe they have right, different right. versions of politics. So there's all the, there's manifestations of these differences, but. What an opportunity for us to say, wow, okay, the person I love the most has this perspective that is different from mine. What can I learn? How can I grow? It doesn't mean I have to subscribe to it specifically or perfectly or exactly in the same way, but how can that expand my awareness and help me see a bigger picture? Or how can that create more you know, loving conviction into what I, I believe and what fuels my passion while still allowing my partner to hold theirs in parallel because that's what fuels theirs. Yes. And I will say it a million times over. One of the most challenging things we do to other people is attempt to force them into many versions of ourself. Mm -hmm. 
it's really hard to say, I honor your individuality, but have the same faith that I have, have the same political perspective that I have, have the same eating approach that I have, and then I'll honor every other difference that you have. That takes away so many opportunities to really see the variations, the multifaceted amazingness that we as humans all bring to the table. Because every one of us having our own unique perspective on everything affords me an opportunity to learn something new about myself. And I love that. Like that just makes life so spicy for me, (laughs) right? And I don't have to agree with everything that everyone says or does or eats or puts into their body, but that's okay because I'm not walking their path. But I can certainly learn something from it, even if it's what I don't desire to do or don't desire to eat. There's something in there that I can say, huh, that's interesting. (laughs) So if we in our personal journey, especially in our partnership, can just go, wow, Austin, you as my partner, and this is not the case, but you as my partner may not always appreciate something that I'm learning about myself, but you still appreciate me. How lucky am I to have a partner who gives me the space to learn all things about myself, even if it doesn't align with you? That's love. Now, so far you've appreciated everything I've (laughs) learned about myself too, so I just want to clarify. But if we can be in a connected partnership like that, where we just give each other the space, yeah. right? Absolutely. Well, and I think this even goes, maybe one of the source things that we can kind of talk about in this regard is compassion. You know, you and I've had a lot of conversations about this as I've been uh, in school, uh, getting my master's at Harvard, and our first class was about compassion, right? And kind of one of the things that we've continued to talk about, you know, before and even after this class is how our compassion to others is limited by our compassion to ourselves. And if you're just starting a personal growth journey or you're well, well, you know, deep into it many, many years under your belt, being more compassionate to yourself still seems to be a strong theme because there's always room for improvement in that area. And so if we can breathe that compassion into ourselves internally, then the idea of drifting apart or putting expectations on others or putting others down or you know comparison or competition with others, again, that just falls away because we understand that the reality is, is, is no one fully knows themselves yet because we don't even know ourselves yet. And so if we can have compassion for ourselves in those moments that we have yet to experience who we are and recognize that, okay, well, so is everyone else on this planet, then it just, just calms it down a little bit and just recognizes that, yeah, we're all exactly where we're meant to be. We're in the exact spot. We are perfectly imperfect in this experience that we're having right now or they don't need to be any further along i don't need to be any further along i'm exactly where i'm meant to be to have the experience i am to become the person i am i desire to be yes (laughs) you are perfectly imperfect my darling and i am incredibly grateful for that thank you right back at you sweetheart Uh, Thank you for listening today. Uh, Really, really appreciate you diving in. This most recent podcasts have been uh, some difficult topics. And and these are things that Amber and I feel very passionate about because they are 
very much what we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, this is a collaboration. This isn't us telling you how to live or how to be or what to do. This is just us sharing where we're at, what has worked for us and what hasn't. And, and we learn from you and, and hopefully you're learning from us through this process. And that is the beauty of growth, of evolution, of expansion of our entire species, the human consciousness. And so please, please feel free to share a comment below. Let us know what works for you. How do you and your partner or a friend or a business colleague, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. How do you, uh, you know, work together and in, in a place of love grow uh, even if it's different, how do you grow in that space in parallel and lift each other up to experience the very best versions of yourselves? We can't wait to hear.